Hello and welcome one more time. My name is Alex Centeno. And uh, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the one thing that we're missing when it comes to automating DaVinci Resolve. So in our previous tutorials, and you can check them out uh, below in the description, we have taken a look at how to automate pretty much everything in DaVinci Resolve, except one thing, which is the delivery part. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we're going to do a super quick tutorial in how to uh, deliver automatically. So we're going to render a project with certain settings just from code. If you're excited, I'm excited. Let's do this. I am here in DaVinci Resolve and uh, I have a project that I have pulled up. It's called Test One. I don't really need for it to be pulled up, but uh, I have it pulled up. And uh, let's go ahead and open the script that actually makes this possible. So I actually wrote the steps here so that we have a clear path of what we're doing today. So first of all, we're going to import DaVinci's uh, API. Then we're gonna load the project that we wanna render. We're going to get the timeline that you want to render within that project. We're going to set some presets and settings, and then we go ahead and render, that's it. So let's take a look at the script. The first thing is, just as before, we're gonna be importing a library called DaVinci Resolve Script, and we're importing it as DVR. And then we load that library inside of an object that we're calling Resolve. So that's super simple to do there with a the method script app, Resolve. Next, we're loading the project, um, but to do that, we need to load a project manager. So we call that object and the method called get project manager, and then we assign it to the variable project manager. It can be any name here, but we're choosing to do project underscore manager. Then uh, we select or we uh, assign the name of the project that we wanna render. We assign it to the variable, in this case, the project name that we're gonna use here. I could have used this directly here, but it's a little bit easier to have it verbose like this, to have the name separately. So um, basically what we do is we load the project. How do we load it with the project manager? We uh, call a method called load project with the project name that we defined here. And then we get the current timeline. In this particular case, this project has one timeline. We're calling that timeline, which is the current one, and we're assigning it to a variable called timeline. And then the fun part begins. This is the part that is a little bit different than what we've done so far in the other tutorials. And uh, it's super simple too. The first one is setting the preset. And uh, basically, you have to match the string of the name of the preset that you're gonna be using. Now, there are some methods uh, that you can use to actually get the names of the presets that you already have on your machine. So I'll put them in the description below if you actually want to check that documentation. I actually modified it a little bit because the documentation that comes, for, uh, that comes with DaVinci Resolve inside of DaVinci Resolve, it's kind of dry. And so what I did was this web page that actually makes it a little bit easier to check the information. I'll put it in the description below so that you can use that as well. But basically there are some methods that actually allow you to, instead of setting, instead of setting the preset, you can actually get a list of the presets that are available in your machine so that you don't have to worry about missing uh, the exact name. Because for this part, you need the exact name of the preset that you are going to be using. H.264 master is a predefined name by default, so you're free to use this one uh, because it comes with every installation of the Vinci Resolve. Uh, 
And then number two is actually setting the render, the, the render settings themselves. So uh, here you can use, again, like the, um, the documentation that is in the description below, you can actually check it out to see all the different components that you can set up for the rendering. Here I have four examples. I have first selecting all of the frames, which is set to one, which means yes. So I wanna render the entire timeline. Second, I am defining a target directory. So it's going to render this inside of my desktop in a subfolder called tutorial. And then I'm giving it a name, a custom name, of the file that is gonna be called Mercados. And then finally, I am setting the encoding profile to be high as opposed to main, and then this particular, uh, is particularly valuable, or uh, it works inside of a two, H.264 master. Uh, encoding profiles may not work for other kinds of profiles, so you have to kind of mix and match the preset that you're selecting with the encoding profiles, or any of the render settings that you're that you're um, declaring, and then all that we do is actually call a method that that actually adds the render job to the render queue, and the final thing is we just call uh, the start the rendering for that particular uh, project ID. So when you call project dot add render job, it actually returns the ID of the render job which we're assigning to a variable PID. So that's the rendering that we want to call project.startRendering. So basically what we do is we take, uh, we load our project, in this case it's called test1, and then once we load that project, we grab its current timeline, we define our preset, we define our render settings, and then we proceed to add it to the render queue and then to render it. Let's see how it does. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to call the script. I could call it like this, python, in my case I named it p10.py, uh, or py, there you go. Uh, but in my case, in my computer, I actually created a shortcut for python, so I can just say p and then p10.py and that should do it. Let's go ahead and hide this to the script so that we can see what's going on behind the scenes there. All right, so here we go. All right, so as you can see, what happened behind the scenes is that it actually selected the project, did all the things, added it to the render queue, and then went ahead and exported it. So if we go now to our finder, you'll see that in my subfolder called tutorial, there is a project called Mercados, and it's an actual video that has been rendered with the H.264 master. So uh, let's do it one more time just to show you how incredibly fast this is. So I called it again. By the way, I deleted it, and so now it's back in there. That is as simple as it gets. You can have an unlimited number of projects, you can have an unlimited number of um, timelines inside of those projects, and you can just like do all that you have to do, and then at night when you are done, then you can just call a simple script that actually renders the whole thing, so that in the morning you just wake up to all your projects rendered without having to wait and wait and wait on your computer. If this was helpful, please consider well, last time, so so last time that I invited people to like the video or subscribe, um, I think uh, we lost subscribers instead of adding subscribers. So it's almost like one of those things that I think that people are doing the opposite of what I uh, that I'm inviting people to do. So, so let me invite you to not subscribe to this channel and to not like this video. Maybe that'll work. All right. Hope you have a good one. Take care. Bye.